Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of the setup series on F1 2019 and this time we're going to look into the details behind the suspension geometry. Now in F1 2019 there are four options you can change within the suspension geometry bracket and that is front camber, rear camber, front toe and then rear toe. Now the fact that cambers and toes are within the same section under suspension geometry does not mean they're the same. They both do very different things and are both completely different angles relative to the car. So if we look into a little bit more detail on what these angles are. so And so the toe of the car is a completely different angle. It's the angle of which the wheels are pointing at if you were to view that car from above. And so on most racing cars, the toes differ from front axle to rear axle. So the toes on the front would be pointing outwards, which means the front of the wheel is pointing outwards. And then on the rear, it would be the opposite. So the front of the wheel would be pointing inwards, which is known as toe in. Camber, for example, is the angle of which the wheels are sat at if you were to view the car from the front or the rear. Now, it's a given fact that most race cars run negative camber on all four wheels, which means the tops of the tyres are closer together than the bottom of the tyres. And what this does is allow the car to have grip midway through a corner. When the car's under lateral load and the car's being pushed to one side, it allows the tyres to sit flat whilst going through the corner. And so a quick thing to point out before we start is that suspension geometry adjustments don't make massive gains to your lap time or feel. Aerodynamics, for example, made massive gains to our lap times and it felt completely different from one end of the scale to the other. Transmission through certain corners felt a lot different. Suspension geometry is all about fine tuning. So when you do the rest of the setup, you can kind of use suspension geometry just to get it more drivable and so it feels a little bit nicer to your driving style. Right then, so now we have a bit of a better understanding of what these angles are, let's get into it. What we're going to do to start off with is run the toe angles to their maximum. So we're going to have maximum toe out on the front and maximum toe in on the rear. And so I've used China because it's got quite a lot of mid to high speed corners and they're quite long as well. So suspension geometry can make quite a difference on a track like China. Right then, as you can see, we're starting the lap and we're trying to keep the tyres below 90 degrees on the carcass just because it gets very hot towards the end of the lap and you don't want the rear tyres to be all over the place. And as you can see, the effects of having maximum toe on both axles is on turning with the increased front toe angle, it's a lot more responsive so it's going to turn in a lot better that may allow it to wash out mid corner which is not a good thing so you got to bear in mind that yes having loads of turn in is really good but if it's too much for the car to handle it will just understeer wide mid corner and as you can see we're coming to the end of the second sector now so you're going to see going into this left hander this a lot of turn in but it's a bit too much for the rear tires to cope with at this track where overheating is a real issue so that's another thing you've got to bear into mind is that if you have a lot of turn in then that's going to put more load into the tires and if it's going to overheat them then it's no good you, you need to try and find that balance of having a lot of grip and turn in and responsiveness but not too much that you're going to overheat the tyres and it becomes undrivable. And it's probably worth noting that in real life uh, increased toe and camber angles do increase tyre wear slightly but F1 2019 is not a simulator that's a very important thing to have in mind it's a game so not everything is 100% realistic so these little fine details maybe aren't in the game or if they are they're so fine we're not going to notice them anyway. Now let's change from maximum toe to minimum toe. And so going into turn one, we should in theory have the opposite effect to having maximum toe, and we do. So the initial turn in is less aggressive, but it doesn't mean it's a bad thing because it means in the mid corner, we still have a lot of grip and the car is loaded. So we don't get much understeer or oversteer, to be honest. And I'd say it feels probably a bit nicer having minimum toe in this particular instance. But unlike real life, toe in this game does not affect straight line speed, which is good because it's just one less thing to worry about. Okay, so now onto the camber angles, and what we're gonna do is put the camber to the minimum values and see how the car handles. And as you can see, going into the first left-hander of sector two, you can really expose what difference camera angles make. So mid-corner, we're just getting that little bit of instability, which means we have to make a correction, which is not ideal. And then we get a bit of understeer in the next right-hander. So it just doesn't look planted. And that's because when the car's loaded, we haven't got enough camber to cope with the downforce levels. And as we do in this series, we'll try the opposite extreme. So we're going to go maximum camber now. Now approaching the same section of track, it's a lot different. Uh, we get no kind of instability mid-corner, it's nice and smooth and in the next right-hander we probably get too much grip on the front end so it's turning in so much it's going over the kerb and ideally you'd want to avoid that. So that extreme level of camber is probably a smidge too much for what we want but it's much better than having too little camber. 
However, as we know with setups in any game or any sim, it's all about the balance. So what I'm going to do for China, my chosen suspension geometry values are minus 3 degrees, minus 1.2 degrees, 0.1 of a degree, and then 0.26. So we'll go and try this. I personally think it feels as good as it can be. Um, and yeah, let's see what time we can go and do with it. And like usual, keeping those tyres underneath 90 degrees Celsius on the carcass. And I think that's a very good value actually to start the lap. Um, and you'll just see throughout the whole lap, the car is balanced mid-corner. It's got quite a bit of turning, but it doesn't wash itself out mid-corner. And into our favourite section, sector two, you'll see the balance is the best we've had it. So there's, it's kind of on the limit through the left and then on the right, it, we avoid the kerb nicely. We can still carry good speed and it sets us up nicely for the next part of sector two. So through there, definitely the best we've done that. And then coming to the end of sector two, you'll see before when we get that too much oversteer and we're burning the rear tyres out, we get a nice balance there. And then for the next long right-hander, this is a very tricky corner at the best of times. So we get a lot of turning on the early part of the corner. Then we can stamp the throttle, go through the gears really quickly in overtake as well and it's fine so I think you'll find that I know the cambers and the toes do different things but they do interlink with each other so it, there, it, there is a balance there to try and find between four different parameters and that's why it's quite tricky to find that balance and I mean at the end we set a 130.1 which is a, a fairly respectable time to be fair I mean I've not been sweating China or F1 in general to be honest so I remember when I was practicing for esports 29.5 was achievable I did do that time a couple of times but when you just don't play the game every day lots of hours then you just naturally drop off a level or two so but still the setup feels good other drivers that I know in my team they think it feels good as well so it's definitely a proven kind of balance of the suspension geometry and now once again unfortunately from qualifying to race with park Fermi conditions on you can't change suspension geometry values at all so not that you would anyway because if it's good in qualifying it's pretty much going to be good in the race so uh, I mean the only difference is fuel obviously adds a lot of weight to the car and your tyres are going to be a little bit less grippy because of the wear but you wouldn't change them anyway but just to let you know you can't change them but for the most part that is pretty much suspension geometry ticked off the list I mean what I'll do like every week I'll put the, the values I use for every track in the description below so go and check them out go and check my new video editor out Chris Dix he's thankfully done my helmet as you can see on the screen right now within the game so I think that looks pretty awesome especially the contrast between my lid and the Alfa Romeo livery loving that however that is it for this episode of suspension geometry next up we have suspension for episode 4 that will come out very very soon thanks again for watching subscribe to the channel if you already haven't and like the video that is much appreciated but until the next video see you soon